Hello, beautiful souls. How are you today? It's June 11th. Can you believe it? I wanted to come here in YouTube land and discuss a little something. The power of words. I think as a culture of people, we've really all gone through the indoctrination camps, aka the education system. And we've been taught words that disempower us. What do I mean by that? Well, when you say something like this, I really hope today's the day that everything good that I deserve finds me. You have disempowered your well-intentioned thought with the word hope. Hope implies a lack of faith. It implies lack, period. So when you want to send out a power message, don't follow up with hopefully, because you have literally zapped the energy right out of that message. So we're going to dig into this a little bit today. I looked up the definition of word. You may already know it, but I was a little surprised to see one definition says a command, a password, or a signal. Now, knowing what we know today, June 11th, 2024, we question everything, or you should. I think you should. So if we are taught spells and incantations in the form of the words, the vocabulary that we are taught and tested on as a measure of success, and yet these words are actually meant to disempower us we are definitely working against our own selves, giving commands to take our power away from us and give it to others. I do, I, you know, I have a few examples. So do you ever wonder how the fuck we got here? Like globally, like how did we get here? I really truly believe, of course, this is just my humble opinion, that it doesn't make any sense to our parents when most of them, when we start to tell them about all the things that we're discovering, because they never had the opportunity for the aha moment. Like they were fully entrenched in the indoctrination of hard work pays off, pay attention, behave, stay to yourself. So when they, they, whoever they are, whether it be your parents or your employer or your educators, like whatever, whoever they are, when they say pay attention, who's paying that bill? How do you pay that bill? There's an implied energy exchange, pay attention. What is the price for your attention? your energy. You pay attention. So you give them your energy, you give them your attention. And in return, they manipulate your mind or they give you a pay check. They check your pay based on your level of attention that you've given them. It's a mind bender. So I've had people say to me since I left my career, don't you need a paycheck? And I say to that, I absolutely do not. Because a paycheck comes with all sorts of implied ownership, cords, attachments, negativity, debt, 
it's not really the freedom that they pretend it is. For an example, um, when some people get a job, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, it comes with benefits, right? Bennies, they like to call them. So many people will take a job they do not like. It does not excite them. It does not make them happy. It doesn't allow their true essence of their soul to shine. But they are manipulated into believing that they should do this thing that is a soul suck of their energy so that they can get benefits, insurance for themselves, sometimes for their family, but sometimes not. Sometimes you can't afford it for the family. So you go into it thinking that I'm going to give my time and I'm going to be there Monday through Friday and I'm going to do all the things and I'm going to be a great employee because I need to get those benefits for my family. And then you get there and they go, yeah, sure, we can, we can, we can um, cover your family. Yeah. So your, your benefits are going to cost this much a paycheck and their benefits are going to cost this much a paycheck. And then at the end of the month, you realize you really only worked for a little bit of money to pay for all the things and insurance. So to this point, let me just add, because this is like a whole nother topic, but I just got to say it. If you are being uh, guilted, shamed, whatever, into working a job for the benefits and yet you are questioning everything and you have no faith to go to the doctor, you're, you're just completely over it. You realize that it is a scam and that there are better things that you can choose to do to improve your health and, and help your energy and um, feel better. So you're not going to the doctor. And you're not taking the medication that so-and-so said you needed to take because you don't need it anymore. And so, but you're still paying for these benefits for the what ifs. I ask you to explore the options of a hospital only policy and then use GoodRx for your prescriptions if you are inclined to do that. Because if you truly need a physician, like if you get in a car accident or, you know, you have a big a trauma or you have to have a surgery, you want a hospital policy. But people are insurance poor on top of just being broke because of the system that we live in. And they're paying out of their paycheck when they need the, every penny in their bank to an insurance company for the what ifs. And I'm not saying like, don't be insured. I'm just saying, stop giving your money away and stop having a tie to something that is fear-based and definitely not health-based. Okay, back to words, <laughs> which they I think they all really tie in together, but I don't know. We'll see. So hard work, hard work. That's a term, hard work. It implies hard work pays off, right? Hard work and labor pays off. Hard work is an energy suck because hard work means that you have given lots of energy, no matter what it is, to get a paycheck, right? So we're going to check your energy level with this pay and you're going to feel like it. the The favor was returned. I gave my energy, they gave me the paycheck. That's how you're going to feel. And then you're going to start to try to exchange with that energy paycheck and you find out it's not nearly as effective or hardworking as your hard work was that earned the paycheck. But they got you. They got you right there anyway. You're weak and you're tired and your body is frail and it's broken down because of all this hard work. And so you get to the weekend in your weakened condition and you don't even have 
the ability to have a good time if you had the pennies to be able to do it. Because everything costs money these days, right? Except for going walk out in nature, which I highly recommend. What about behave? As a parent, I said that a lot. Behave, behave, behave. Because that's all I ever heard when I was growing up too. Behave. Be is a status that you kind of want to be in. Like you want to, you want to cultivate the ability to just be. That means that you're sitting with yourself, you're at peace, you're processing your energy, you're receiving messages, you're recognizing cues that are coming into you that this might be good for you and this may not be good for you. So you're just in the status of being. Be, have. If you just be, you will have answers, peace, uh, love, tranquility, bliss, joy, happiness, all sorts of things. If you just be, then you can have. That's the opposite of hard work and pay attention. Those are things you're paying for with your energy. Be quiet and you will receive. That was the implied message of behave when I was a kid and when I was raising my own. I don't think that it way anymore. Does hard work really pay off? That's a genuine question. Does your hard work truly pay off in the way that you expected it to? Now, knowing what we know, we have to question everything. Any reason someone gives you for a process being the way that it is, when they say, that's just the way it is, <laughs> question it. Because no one's put forth any effort into whether it's actually fucking working or not. Okay, another very, very commonly used term. Let's look at what it really means. Thank you. Thank you. How can that be negative? How could that have a negative meaning? The origin of the words are Latin. And we now know Latin is the language of Lucifer. Look it up. Not on Google. They don't tell you the truth. The, the root is Thai. T-I-E. Like you're tied to them. It is the shortened form of the expression, open quote, I thank you. That is to say, I'm tied to you energetically for the favor you have done to me, and I remain in your debt. The universe maintains the tie, aka the cord, that connects you energetically to the debt. And that is what the universe continues to de deliver to you. Debt. With a thank you. Uh, who decided to really screw us up with that? I'm from the South. We say thank you. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. Like all the time. On average, when I do a QET session... Most beings, no matter what part of the world they're from, have around three to 500 negative cords and attachments. And a lot of them come from our day-to-day -day language and activities that we had no idea was connecting to negative energy and staying there forever. Now, the opposite of this which is something we've been practicing hot and heavy for mm, seven months now. Gratitude. Latin root gratia, gratia is grace. Grace, pleasant recognition for all that is received and given to. <clears throat> it's a high vibrational, it is filled with feeling, and it is heart-centered and spirit-centered. There are no 
obligation, strings, ties, or cords attached to it because you have already delivered the emotional energy exchange in your gratitude. So the universe recognizes that this is not tied to a debt. This is tied to gratitude and continues to deliver gratitude. Big difference. Big difference to say, I am grateful for you. Or I am grateful for this gift. I am grateful for this lunch. I am grateful for this package. Drop the thank yous. Now, a lot of us on this spiritual awakening roller coaster are learning to change our behaviors. We're learning that a lot of things that we were taught and brought up doing are really just not in our highest and best good. Maybe they were okay then, but they're not okay now. Maybe they were never okay. Either way, we're making some changes. As we go through, some people are choosing to do I am affirmations. I am loved. I am a child of source creator. I am love. Uh, anything, okay? I found something and it really resonated with me. And I found it when I was doing some research on um, chakras. And this came from, I uh, don't even remember exactly. It was some sort of video I, thought, I found. Um, it is a spin in a, in a higher consciousness, higher timeline, um, powerful affirmation. So instead of always saying, I am... This goes along with your root, with your um, chakras, with your chakra column. So you start at the root. I am confident. The sacral. I feel confident. The solar plexus. I have confidence. The heart. I love my confidence. The throat. I speak my confidence to myself and the universe. Third eye, I see my confidence. And the crown, I know I'm confident. So what you're doing is, is you're activating the chakra and grounding it in the action that the chakra is already doing, but for you in a very meaningful way. And it is literally just by changing the word. Words have power. Words have power. Words have meaning. Uh, the word can hurt. The word can love. The word can encourage. The words can power you or disempower you. It is up to us to recognize them for the context in which we were taught to use them and understand whether discern not understand, understand how that best serves us now or does it. So let's talk about the word job. This one's a little interesting to me. Job, J-O-B, Job, Hebrew meaning persecuted. Persecuted. Do you ever feel persecuted when you go to work? When you go to your job, do you feel persecuted? Interesting. Job. It's a piece of work to be done by a human. Definition. Piece of work to be done by a human. So, okay. It could also mean like an acronym. Just a, over broke. J-O-B. Job creates just enough to get by. Almost preventing you from being broken. I don't know. Does that resonate? Think about that. You go to your J-O-B Monday through Friday. Let's think about that for a minute. Monday, Latin word. Lunar dies. Day of the moon. Tuesday, 
Tuesday comes from T-I-W-S, Tuesday, identifies with Eris, the Greek god, and Mars, the planet. <clears throat> Day of Mars. Day of Mars. Wednesday. Two gods for this planet. I mean, for this day. Old English god Wooden and the Roman god Mercury. Hermes, Mercury, the planet. Thursday. Norse god Thor and the Olympian god Zeus. Friday. Latin Day of Venus, the day of love, German goddess Frigga, wife of Odin. So the entire week, you're giving honor, homage to the Romans, who were not kind people, and gods, and self-proclaimed gods, and planets. So I know for a fact, there's a whole lot of people that are a member of certain religions that they don't want anything to do with astrology because astrology is evil, is what they say. Yet the days of the week can be completely benign, but yet they come from an honor to gods and planets. So what are we doing there? Can you, can you have it both ways? I don't know. I don't think you can but I think that other people will try to. So now let's talk about the weekend. Remember, you go to your job Monday through Friday, and by the time you get off your job, you're so weakened, you don't have the ability to have fun, joy, bliss, anything for your weekend of Saturday and Sunday. Typical weekends for the typical job work week. Saturday. Day of Saturn, another planet. <clears throat> Romans claimed it as Saturn's day, Saturnalia. Look it up. Sunday, the day of the sun, the day of sun worship. Christians demanded sun worship on Sunday. Opposing the Sabbath with the Jews. This came about in the 2nd and 3rd century. Same time as the Council of Nicaea. Weekend. It's meant to be your, your rest time, right? Your time that you get to do what makes you happy. But when you've given all you can... That hard work that pays off and they give you the paycheck. Do you have the ability, the energy, the, the mental, physical, spiritual fortitude to do anything fun on the weekend? And then when you do, do you almost immediately regret it? Because now you have to get ready for the Monday, the Monday job, the Monday morning grind. I don't know. You know, there's a whole lot to keeping us tied, corded to the schedule. That is very disempowering. Those that live by checklists, calendars, and clocks are slaves to the calendars, clocks, and checklists. They feel guilt and shame and, and frustration all because of a, a calendar and a clock, an alarm, a schedule that they consented to. So they are literally disempowering themselves and also causing low vibrational feelings from something that they've been engaged with. So a lot of people say, how did I get all these negative cords and attachments? Well, you consented to them. That's why whenever we do love, forgiveness, and gratitude, we got to give ourselves forgiveness for the role we played and in, in entering into things that actually harmed us, that was actually not in our highest and best good, it doesn't mean you did it willfully. You didn't, do, most people don't do things to harm themselves for fun. We do it because we are ignorant to the truth and we, we are blind, 
blindly following the recommendations and the guidance of those that came before us, AKA educators, parents, society as a whole. We didn't know any better, basically. And I ask you now to do your own due diligence and figure things out for yourself. And when you know better, make better choices and do better as a collective. If 1% did that, the ripple effect would be very, very large throughout the community, without throughout the world, I would feel. So I did a little bit of digging and I come up with some, some words that some of them were really things that just kind of stuck with me. Certainly not a complete list. Knock yourself out, add into it. Um, comment in in the, the video, what's your pet peeve word? What's your word that you're just like, ah, no, cancel, cancel. That's not my word. There's some that are obvious these days and others that aren't. Okay, so one of them, I I am retraining my brain to try my very, very best to use inner standing instead of understanding. And Yeshua taught me this one because it was part of his teachings that we inner stand because knowing and wisdom is within and no one is above another and no one is below another. We are all equals in the eyes of source creator and the divine. And so we want to understand better. Understanding. Okay. Survive. This is one that came to me years ago because I went through cancer twice. And uh, it's like you automatically get put on this cancer survivor email list or something. And I bought into that for a while. And then at some point in time, I was like, if I keep identifying as a cancer survivor, it connects me to being ill, to being in a status of having cancer. And I don't think that's best for me now. I'm beyond that. That's already happened. And I don't want to continue to be tied to that energy. So I stopped. So that's my example of that. Also, I feel like, especially now when people um, speak about surviving, it inherently brings about like we've been in battle, like we've survived a, a fight. We, we, we've survived an attack. We've survived barely or we are surviving barely. Unfortunately, I hear that used all the time. I suggest a few other alternatives like expansion, growth, thrive, thrive, or evolution. Because you can survive something in the moment you survived a car accident, you survived an a, a animal attack or something. But beyond the first, but beyond the actual event, are you still surviving it? Are you thriving? Are you expanding? Are you evolving? Are you growing? Food for thought. Okay, another one, shadow work. We use this word all the time, this expression all the time. I have come to appreciate soul growth, soul expansion, and soul evolution more. Because I think it's more... Um, encompassing of what you're actually doing. I don't see it as work, shadow work. I don't see it as work because I really do have a negative connotation with work because of all the things I've already just mentioned. But shadow work, the concept of shadow work, is beneficial to who you are in the now. And it's continual. It's not a one event thing. It's a journey. It's not a checklist. I've said that a thousand times. So 
as you go about your soul expansion, your growth and your evolution, you will have to deal with your shadows, but that is in your highest and best good. And it pulls you up to your highest and best timeline. So I prefer those three other options. Energy protection implies, again, that you're in an attack, that you're actively being hunted or uh, tracked down. I think it also can be a little, um, a level of paranoia sometimes. Now, granted, we all get attacked, some of us more than others. And anymore, I just know that it's another another thing, person, place, or thing that I needed to um, I need to deal with. That there's something energetic that needs to be done. That's how I see it. I don't feel vi- like a victim. I I don't also try to make sense of why others do those things. I just know that it's not in my highest and best good, and I'm going to clear it up. Period. I don't give it more energy than it deserves. But you can also use the term energy accountability, that you know that you're clear and you know when you're not. And when you're not, what steps are you going to take to ensure that you remain clear going forward? So it's just a constant evolution and a and a, a realignment back to your, your clear state of energy. Plain and simple educate educate i'm not um you know i really feel like because 98 percent of all education systems no matter where you are no matter what state region country are founded in the rothschilds jp morgan Rockefeller indoctrination because they own them. They own and control the publishing houses that print the textbooks and everything from start to finish. So they are indoctrination camps and we have seen the downside of that. When you truly 100% buy into their bullshit, People get harmed and it's happened in, it has happened for decades, blindly thinking that we are bettering ourselves because we have degree after degree after degree. When we, we sit back and realize how many unemployed MBAs are out there? A lot. And what did they learn? But, I mean, really, what did you learn? I don't know, because... <laughs> Whatever it is, it didn't secure you a position that J-O-B that you were hoping for. But what it did do is give you a lot more mind manipulation. You were exposed to a lot more words that are disempowering and a lot more theories to things that keep you out of your power. There's been a lot of wasted money on education, in my opinion. Latin root, educare, to lead out or bring forth. And when I read that definition or that that entomology, I thought, well, that sounds like we're herding cattle or sheep or something. And that's also true of education. Like in lower education, whenever your child's in kindergarten and first grade and second grade and third, you know, they're lining them up and... Put them in a pecking order, whatever that happens to be, shortest to tallest, alphabetical, whatever, whatever their class number is, up to the teacher. And then they give them consequences for not staying there. So know your place, be in your place. And if you're out of your place, you're going to get, you're going to be punished for it. That's what they're teaching them. I mean, that's just one of the many, many examples. But it also teaches them to stay in their lane. And to allow themselves to be herded like farm animals. 
So think about that. I think a free range child is much wiser, much more grounded, much healthier. And they learn how to work within the energies that is in our world because our world is not all lined up like a bunch of robots, but that's what they want. Okay. <clears throat> expensive. The word expensive. When you have someone say, oh, but that's so expensive. Oh, that's so expensive. You want to pay that? That's so expensive. Does that make you feel like there's a lack there? It's Latin expend, paid out, lavish, extravagant. It implies a lack mentality. It, apply, it implies this is for some, but not for all, right? So, and it also implies that there are those that are above others. Overall lacking is the, is the implied meaning there. It's what I see it. Alternatively, is the expense worth my energy exchange? Know your worth. When, when you know your value and you know your worth, nothing is too expensive for your worth. You are priceless. But you also want to know what you're getting. What are you exchanging your energy for? Now, this one kind of blew my mind. As a retired nurse, been at the bedside for over 25 years, all I'd ever done was work in hospitals and facilities and had felt called to be a healing type modality my entire life. Looked up healing. Because on occasion, people say that when they are advised about healing, it makes them feel less than. There is no Latin root for the word healing. And Latin is a main language in medicine. So why is there no Latin root to the word healing? There's Old English, restore to sound health. And sound relates to frequency and vibration and resonance. All things that can actually heal in sound. Wholeness. Wholeness. Healing can mean wholeness that you are no longer fractal, that your, your soul is completely whole and healed now. Your auric field is healed. Your body is healed. The Greek meaning is saved from death. There's not a Latin for healing. Interesting to me. Some of the other ones I didn't look into very um, much. I just jotted a few notes down, so bear with me. Um, sick. How about, um, integrating, purging and detoxing? Cause a lot of times we are integrating, purging and detoxing things. It's not an illness. It's just your body getting rid of stuff that doesn't serve it. Hate because it's the polar opposite of love and love is the strongest power you can have. So if you're full of hate, then you are very disempowered and it doesn't matter how tight you clench your fist and how loud you scream and holler, you have no energetic power because you're full of hate and that is very low vibrational. <clears throat> Late implies the power that time has over us when time is a false construct. Time only exists for us so that we can understand, evolve, ascend through being held captive by time. True story. Can't. Can't. It implies you don't have a choice, but you do. 
you always have a choice. So I say you can. Trying. When someone says, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm going to try. This came to me decades ago. When my kids just say, I'm going to try. I said, you're giving me, you're preparing me for why you're going to fail. You're setting yourself up for the excuse of why you're not going to get this done. Don't try. Do. Morning. I do say grand rising. I'm not sure how else to greet the day. I'm very blessed every day that I rise from my rest of my avatar and my consciousness rejoins this body and we go about our day. It is not in any way, shape, or form a good morning because I'm not, I'm not trying to have a good death. I do believe that good morning is tied to M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, and that is a celebration of death because we're all dying different, you know, paces as different races and different collectives and whatnot i'm not celebrating death i'm celebrating life grand rising and i talked about pay attention already so it's my belief after a long time on this journey when i first was hearing about time being an illusion and everything happens in parallel timelines at the same moment so there really is no past and there really is no future it's just the now it's just the now and we have layer of layer of layer of layer of layer of parallel timelines, thousands and thousands and thousands of timelines. So every time that you make a decision in the now, you're jumping timelines. Every time you make a decision, you're jumping timelines. If you make a decision that's in the highest and best good for you and aligned to source creator, you're jumping up. If you're making a decision that is service to self, not in alignment to source and causing harm, you're dropping down. You're always, 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 always jumping timelines, parallel dimensions. Just that easy. In the now is the only place to have your thoughts. So if you're stuck in a calendar and you're always wanting to plan something 30 days ahead, you're not in the now. The future has yet to be written because it's based on your decisions that you make in the now moment. That being said, when we speak about our highest and best timeline and we want to do these affirmations that are positive and full of energy in a, in a higher consciousness and full of faith way, you don't want to disempower the statement with words that have a negative meaning or a disempowering meaning. <clears throat> so whenever you think about something that you want to say, I want you to truly think about it. I don't want you to talk about things in the way that you've always talked about them because you may have a completely different insight and you may have a completely different energetic appreciation for what that word brings or takes from your world because it actually does have a huge effect. Think about it. Spells are just incantations. They're an organization of words meant to change the energy of another person, place, or thing. Energy is in the words. Words have power. Being mindful of that can fully restore your power to actually manifest the things that are in your mind because you're not deflating and disempowering them when they come out of your mouth. You can have the image, you can have the vision, you can have the thoughts, you can have the heart, the soul, all of that. And then you speak it and you cut the legs out from underneath it. See what I mean? It's, it's innocuous. Like you don't really see it because we've been taught these things our entire life. So you have to change your perspective. You want to look at things not from your mind because it's been so indoctrinated, so manipulated. You want to look at it from your heart space. The, the mismatch of our frequency is a big deal. The mismatch of frequency means that you are speaking your highest and best truth and your highest and best frequency and someone who is not there cannot receive the message. And it is frustrating. 
but it is also not your responsibility on how they receive your message. Just speak your truth and let the frequency carry the power of the word where it needs to go. It literally can hover in a being's aura until their frequency rises to the point and then they and then it comes in. It can be received. And they go, hmm, I think so-and-so said something to me the other day that seems really interesting to me now. And when they get back to you, it's like six months later. But for them, it it just became a realization because of the frequency rate rose within them to receive the frequency tied to the word that you left with them. That's why we call it a mustard seed. We have been robbing ourselves out of a lot of goodness, a lot of good intentioned things. One of the worst that we do to ourselves is using the word hope or hopefully. Hope means it's not happening yet. Hope means it may or may not happen. I don't really have faith that it's going to, but I want to speak about it because I want to be, you know, on the upswing. But if you go back to the fact that everything is happening in the now moment, then that doesn't hold water. So speak it as if it's happening right now because it is. It may not be happening right now in this dimension, but it is happening right now. And you have to rise your, your in your frequency to meet it where the action is occurring and can occur. Because not all dimensions can have everything occurring in that moment. Because it's frequency based. Everything has a frequency and everything is energy. We are energy. Words are energy and have a frequency. It all makes this beautiful web that is our world. So your challenge, if you choose to accept it for today, and it's a daily challenge, I get, I 100% admit it, is to consciously think about the words that you're going to speak and do they actually correlate to the frequency of your intention? Do the words that you're going to speak correlate equally to the frequency of the intention that you want to set forth or do they disempower it and if you don't know think about it understand discuss with your higher self sit out in nature ponder it for a minute there doesn't need to be a rush to communicate most things unless unless it's a fire 911 fire um But I do want you to think about it because we do a lot of damage to ourselves and to others and the words that we use. They have a lot, they pack a punch. They can also cause core wounds and they can really divide us. So we've seen that play out time and time again. So drop the judgment, get out of your head, shut your ego up. And think about what you've actually been doing in your own world, what you've been doing to your own energy. And you may have some things that you might want to change. You may, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that you're not going to go to the job, but I'm saying don't give the job all of you. That's not how it's supposed to be. Higher dimensions, there's things that we do. There's jobs that we do, but we're never expected to do them for more than 20 to 30 hours a, re- a week. 20 to 30 hours a week. The rest is joy, bliss, family, love, fun. It's completely inverted here. And it's time to take our power back. And we do that when we're mindful of the words that we're going to use to convey what's in our heart. That's how we get out of the head's perspective and move into the heart perspective and actually deliver a vibratory match a frequency match to what is in our heart when we speak it out. I hope this message has found you well today. Please check out Truth Resonates podcast. It drops every Friday morning at 6 a.m. I have my violetlotusenergy.com website up and live, and it is full of information and services, and we get great traffic from all over the world. I'm super thankful, so grateful. See, I'm learning. Grateful, grateful, grateful. 
and stay with me here on YouTube and Rumble. Uh, Rumble is where I'm dropping mission log details. Uh, YouTube can't handle the truth. So I'll see you there and you guys have a great day.